There have been a ton of changes to the world of breast implants over the last couple years and even over the last one to two weeks. On this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know about choosing breast implants. Just one week ago, one of the most popular breast implants was taken off of the market. The company went bankrupt, and this has sent shockwaves through the breast implant business and plastic surgery in general. Now that implant that was taken off the market is the Ideal Implant. Now the Ideal Implant is a saline filled implant that has several internal chambers that allow the salt water to redistribute more evenly inside of it. So essentially the outside is the same as a traditional saline implant, but inside that implant are little chambers that allow the salt water to redistribute more evenly and it allows it to create a more natural feel of the breast after surgery. Now this implant has been around for many, many years. I actually invested in this implant, gosh, probably back in 2008 or so. And it was developed by a plastic surgeon who actually was on a plane and had two cups in front of him one cup with a drink that had no ice in it and one cup with a drink that did have ice in it. That plane underwent a bunch of turbulence and he found that the drink with the ice in it, the water, the drink did not splash out of it, whereas the one without the ice did splash out of it. And so the big negative, the big drawback that people don't like about traditional saline implants, and this is a traditional saline implant, is that this saline implant basically has one chamber and it's filled with salt water and it just doesn't feel as natural as some of the other implants like the silicone implants. And what people really don't like about saline implants are the wrinkles and the ripples that you may see and sometimes feel with these implants. And so this doctor came up with this idea of, well, if you've got saline inside of an implant like this and it kind of sloshes around, what if you put baffles inside, you make chambers inside that allow that salt water to redistribute a bit more evenly. And so instead of it sloshing around, like a traditional saline, it doesn't in the ideal implant. And so this implant was uh, developed and it has been created and it's been on the market and FDA approved for many, many years. And I've actually put quite a few of these into patients. Uh, patients in general have been really happy with it, but literally a week ago, I, as well as all the other plastic surgeons who use these implants, received an email stating that the company was kaput. Like, just like that, the company is out of business uh, and we are no longer selling them and if you've got stock in them, you cannot send it back to us. Your stock is essentially worthless if you don't have a patient who wants those implants. Now, the Ideal Implant never had a huge market share. I don't know exactly what percentage of patients underwent augmentation with the Ideal Implant. In my practice, it was probably only about 5%. And so, you know, 5% of a huge number, which is a lot of people getting breast augmentation, is still a large number of implants, but in each individual practice, it's not necessarily a huge devastating thing. That being said, now there's one less implant that is available for people to choose from. So what is available when you're looking at breast implants? Well, I mentioned earlier that there still is the traditional saline implant. And this has been around for decades, and it really honestly hasn't changed for decades. Uh, this is an implant that is used occasionally, you know, back before the implant, uh, the silicone implant ban was removed back in 2006, we were using this all the time. And now that the silicone implants have been available for so long, and there's such a variety of silicone implants to choose from, it's really not all that common to use it. Now the benefit of using a saline implant, however, is that if an implant breaks, if it ruptures, you will know that it's broken. That's the main benefit with saline. You do get some uh, peace of mind with it knowing that your implant is either intact or broken and you know the status of it. And that is very different than the other implants which are silicone implants. I'm just gonna show you here, I've got a table in front of me with the different implants that we're gonna go over. So the most commonly used implant now are the smooth silicone implants. And implants can come in uh, saline or silicone, so we've talked about the saline. That's really all that's available saline-wise in general. For silicone, however, there are a bunch of options. And this is the most common one. This is a memory gel, uh, Mentor memory gel smooth round silicone implants. Implants can come in a smooth surface, or in a textured surface, and you can see this is a textured surface implant, okay? It has basically a sandpapery shell to it. The smooth implants have a smooth shell to it, 
okay? And these work very differently in the body. Smooth walled implants are made to actually move around a bit, okay? There is a front and there is a back, so you don't want to necessarily flip around, but it is made to move around a little bit, and that helps to create the soft feel of a natural breast augmentation. So soft and pink and warm. What skincare ingredient is touted by the vast majority of plastic surgeons and dermatologists as the best to get smoother, younger looking skin? The answer is retinol. And our Yoon Beauty Retinol Moisturizer is the cornerstone for our youth promoting skincare regimen. Like all Yoon Beauty products, it's fragrance free, cruelty free, and free of potentially harmful ingredients. To check out the Retinol Moisturizer and all the Yoon Beauty skincare products, go to yoonbeauty.com or click the link in the caption below. Textured implants are in general made to stick in place. And that's why whenever you have a teardrop shaped implant, that's typically made with a textured surface because you want that textured surface to basically stick in place to avoid a teardrop shaped implant from going upside down and looking like an upside down teardrop. <laughs> and so teardrop shaped implants are always made with a textured shell. Smooth implants are typically in a rounder type of an appearance. So you have the option between smooth and textured. I do not recommend textured implants anymore, okay? Um, there is a rare type of cancer called ALCL, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, that occurs with textured implants. Now currently there's only about 500 cases worldwide, which that's still 500. I say only, but that's a relatively low number when you're considering hundreds of thousands, if not millions of women who have these implants but still one case of cancer is too many when you're talking about breast implants. And because of this risk of anaplastic large cell lymphoma, this brand of implant, this is a Natrel uh, BioCell textured implant, has actually been taken off the market. It is not available. But there are two other brands that do have very similar implants like this, Sientra and Mentor, that still have their textured implants available. Those implants do have a lower risk of ALCL than the Natrel implants, okay, but that risk is still there. And for that reason, I do not recommend any textured implants anymore. I don't use them anymore. Luckily, I rarely use them earlier in my practice before we knew that they, were, that they had a, this risk of cancer. Um, and so I'm very happy because I honestly never liked how these felt anyway, okay? They tend to stick to the tissues, they feel firmer, not quite as natural. So anyways, this is not the type of implant I recommend anymore. Some of them have been taken off the market. In rare cases, I think if you've got a certain type of complication from your implant, then use of one of these may be worth the risks, but in my practice, I basically never use them. So if I never use those, uh, so right now what you're saying then is, wait a minute, so the ideal implant is off the market, you don't recommend any of the textured implants, what do you have as an option? Well, you do have the smooth silicone implants, and these come in different sizes and shapes, okay? They come in very small, all the way up to 800 cc's, which is quite large. But they also come in different shapes. So you can get these types of implants that are in a relatively low profile, and this basically is a implant that doesn't project a lot. You can see it looks very discus shaped. But you can also get them in the opposite of that, where the implant is very round and projecting. And you can see there's a very big difference between these two implants. Uh, why would then you choose an implant that is flatter and wider versus one that is rounder? Well, if you've got a wider chest and you're looking for a softer enhancement, one that doesn't look as obviously done, then you may choose an implant with a lower profile. If you, however, are looking for a rounder look, uh, if you like that kind of round appearance, then, and especially if you're really narrow chested, then a higher profile implant may give you more of the result that you're looking for. And so there are implants that are once again kind of flat, there's ones that are fairly round, and they have ones that are kind of in the middle <laughs> as well. And this is something that your plastic surgeon should definitely discuss with you. So to put this all together, when you're looking at choosing breast implants, there are not as many options today as there used to be literally a week and a half ago. And what I encourage my patients right now to choose between is to choose between a smooth saline implant. If you like the idea of knowing whether your implant is broken or not, then saline gives you that benefit. But the negative with these types of implants is they just don't look and feel quite as natural as silicone. If you choose silicone, then I recommend my patients choose a smooth silicone implant, like any of these, okay. Um, 
and then we can look at different sizes and profile shapes that will match your body and give you the result that you're looking for. And finally, I no longer recommend using the any type of a textured implant. Um, some of them once again have been taken off the market and tear down my cheek, the ideal implant is kaput, it is no more. Well, there is so much more to know about breast implants if you are considering breast implant surgery or if you've had breast implant surgery in the past. And I recently made a video about 10 breast secrets that you need to know. And this includes a little more information about cancer and breast implants. It includes the breast implant type that causes your breasts to never stop growing. Yes, literally never stop growing and a whole lot more. Take a peek at that video right up here and you will find it hopefully very enlightening. And remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and auto-juvenate before you operate.